had a fantastic week i want to take this opportunity to welcome you to today's chemistry wednesday uh, though we are doing a biology wednesday uh, since last week wednesday so uh, hope god has been good on your side uh, similarly to me i've been very fine i've been very well uh, the weather today is okay is conducive for learning so sit down, uh, relax, and uh, don't sleep in class, and concentrate for a few minutes, around 30, 40 minutes, uh, we shall be through. So this is Teacher Kirwa, always here, uh, right uh, on time, every other Wednesday from 1 p.m. to 2 p.m. The duration is one hour, and uh, we have a live a facebook live lesson so let me take this time to say uh, thank you for tuning in thank you for coming through uh, keep liking keep commenting and god is going to bless you uh, so otherwise feel free uh, any questions you have put it in my comment box uh, also go to my youtube channel teacher kirwa like subscribe and uh Anytime I post the videos there, you will be able to view. So far, so good. We have uh, updated the videos on YouTube. Our last lesson that we had last Wednesday is already present there. So uh, visit that page or channel and uh, help a student learn while at home. So welcome. God bless you as we go through our today's uh, lesson okay so uh, last week we started uh, looking at cell physiology we looked at uh, the definition of cell physiology and we said it is the study of cell structures and function we mentioned the importance of the cell membrane and the properties or the characteristics of cell membrane uh, the fact that when a cell a cell manufactures uh, okay, th there are several biological processes that take place within the cell as we'll be started, uh, studied from the last part of this, uh, of the form 1 one, that is digestion. Then we have gaseous exchange and then we have uh, nutrition. We have, we have several biological processes taking place within the cell. So now the cell requires to take in some, uh, sa some materials and after that food is manufactured or substances are manufactured and then taken out of the cell so uh, that's what we are looking at now movement of substances in and out of the cell that brought us to physiological processes so in our first physiological process that we discussed we talked about diffusion and we said Diffusion is movement of particles or movement of molecules from a region of high concentration to a region of low concentration. Uh, we gave the factors affecting diffusion, uh, factors that either increase or decrease the rate of diffusion. And I told you to find out the importance of diffusion. I don't know if you have done that, but I hope uh, you have tried to, to, to check on it so uh, we I left when we were talking about osmosis we defined osmosis uh, maybe just to remind ourselves for those who have forgotten okay now uh, in our last lesson let me paint this one Oh uh, yes. Hope it is the painting is okay now. 
All right. So in our the last time we looked at osmosis and I used these two diagrams to explain the whole process of osmosis. Now, uh, diagram A, we said A has more solvent molecules, less solute molecules, just as you can see from the diagrams. And then uh, it is now, so we said um, any, any, any substance or any solution that have more solvent molecules and less solute molecules uh, is referred to as, they, uh, is referred to as a lowly concentrated solution uh, or you can say it is a dilute solution or you can also say it is a hypotonic solution so this is a solution that has less solute molecules on the other side the the a solution that has more sol solute molecules than solvent molecules solute molecules we said are uh, are solid any solid molecule is is a is a solute so any uh, solution that has more solute molecules an example of this is a uh, you take a cup of tea okay you take a cup of tea and then uh, let's say uh, yeah one cup and you add well, if you add an equal amount of sugar yeah a cup of tea add an equal amount of sugar the same cup how will it test? It will. Uh, you will tend to say it is concentrated. So that means it is highly concentrated. With what? With sugar. Okay. Otherwise, if you are using one cup, uh, a cup of uh, a cup of tea, and then you add a teaspoon of uh, of sugar, it will be it will be more dilute. There is more water, and therefore we say the solution is dilute now dilute also comes from uh, from the, the the you remember when you buy a quincher what do you do to a quincher you add water what are you doing when you are adding water we say you are diluting a solution in chemistry we teach dilution of solutions so you are diluting to make the solution dilute so that is a uh, so this one we say is highly concentrated and then it is hyper uh, normally hyper means high hyper means high so hyper high concentration hypo means low hypo means low so hypotonic solution so osmosis is the movement of some of water molecules or solvent molecules from a hypotonic solution to hypertonic solution through the semi-permeable membrane. Uh, we also now we look at animal cell in uh, we looked at animal cell. This is what we did. We looked at an animal cell in a hypotonic solution. We said when it is placed in a hypotonic solution, it will take in water. Okay, it will take in water by osmosis. It the take water. Yes, it the take water by osmosis in the swell. And when in the swell, it the bursting. Okay, so it takes in water, it swells, and it bursts. That's an animal cell. And then we said the process by which an animal cell takes in water, swells, and bursts when put in a hypotonic solution is referred to as hemolysis or hemolysis if you like uh, in a hypertonic solution it will lose water by osmosis it will shrink and becomes crenated so we say a crenated cell that's an animal cell when it loses water it shrinks and becomes crenated now uh, uh, that process by which a red blood cell or an animal cell loses water becomes crenated uh, is called Gradation. Okay, it's called gradation. So let's look at animal cell. No, no, a plant cell in hypotonic solution. Now, a plant cell, we are taking a plant cell. I'll be coming back to this several times. So, taking a plant cell, putting it in hypotonic, you put it in hypotonic. So, that means the plant cell. When, if the solution is hypotonic, we take it as A. So let's say, put it in A. 
So that means the plant cell will be B. Now, as we have defined osmosis, we, are, we have said osmosis is the movement of solvent molecules from A to B, so from hypotonic to this. So that means the first thing that happens is that the plant cell takes in water by osmosis, okay? It detects water by osmosis. Now, when it takes water by osmosis, it swells. It swells. Now, what happens when it is swelling? The, the cytoplasm, the cell contents, the cell contents exerts a pressure to the cell contents uh, exerts pressure to the cell wall. Now, let me explain what I mean by cell contents. Now, you realize when you look at a plant cell, a plant cell, let me just draw it here for purposes of understanding. A plant cell looks like this. Assume that's a plant cell. Now, an animal cell, if this is an animal cell. Now, a plant cell contains a cell wall, okay, and a cell membrane. All right. An animal cell only contains a cell membrane. This uh, uh, A plant cell contains a cell wall, and a cell membrane so it is double now when we inside here so this an animal cell inside here is the cytoplasm inside here is the cytoplasm on this one inside here we have a vacuole inside a plant cell we have a vacuole now a vacuole contains cell sap Okay, a vacuole contains cell sap. Cell sap, uh, cell sap, sap is a fluid substance. Sap is a fluid substance containing dissolved sugar, contain water, contains iron, so many things, mineral salts, okay, mineral salts are contained in the cell sap which is found in the vacuole. So inside the cell, this is what we are discussing now. So that we have the hypotonic solution A, which, which this cell is put into. Now inside the cell, inside the cell, the cell sap is now hyper. So this hypotonic, the cell sap will be hypertonic solution. So that is what uh, we can say about a blood cell. So when we say, the, the, it takes in water, swells, so the cell contents represent the cell content inside here, the cytoplasm or the vacuole together with the cell membrane. We call it the tonoplast. Let's say uh, the, 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 the cell contents or the tonoplast. Tonoplast. Tonoplast is the cell contents together with the cell membrane. We call it the tonoplast. So the tonoplast exerts a pressure to the cell wall. So this one begins to bulge. Now I want you to imagine this. When it takes in water, water goes inside here. What happens? It swells. So this one will bulge. As it bulges, we can take, uh, we can use this one. Uh, we can use a ball, okay? You know, a ball or a bicycle or a, or, or a motorbike. Inside it, take for example a bicycle. A bicycle equal a tube. A bicycle tire equal a tube and then equal a the, the cover, the outer covering. So the outer covering represents the cell wall and the tube is represented by the cell membrane. So when you, you pump, Wakati unaweka pressure kwanza inaanza na the tube kwanza inaanza kuswell until you feel it in the tire 
So in a swell paka ukifinya tire you feel it from the tire that it is either enough or not enough. Now so the cell membrane will exert pressure. Now this pressure the pressure exerted by the cell contents on the cell wall is called tagger is called tagger pressure so the pressure exerted by the cell contents um, towards the cell or to the cell wall is called tagger pressure now uh, so that one keeps on happening until a point where this the, the cell contents the tonoplast begins to pull the cell wall now um, so we can see the cell wall exerts back a pressure that is equal and opposite to tagger. The cell wall exerts a pressure, exerts back a pressure that is equal and opposite to tagger called wall pressure. I hope I am writing well for you people uh, to see. So I hope it is visible. So, tagger pressure exerted by the tonoplast, the cell, the vacuole, the subvacuole, uh, the cell membrane towards the cell wall. Now the cell wall exerts uh, back a pressure that is called, that is equal and opposite to tagger, which is called wall pressure. So wall pressure is equal and opposite. When we talk about um, uh, in physics, in physics you learn about action and reaction force. Okay, action force uh, we can say tagger pressure is action force. Now the reaction force is wall pressure. So there is pressure from outside and from inside. So that is what um, the cell, the plant cell, does not burst. So maybe we can say. So at this point, the plant cell is said to be is said to be turgid. Is said to be turgid. Uh, where the, we have the tagger pressure and the wall pressure so when it is it is stiff tagged uh, means stiff or firm stiff stiff double f or firm so when it is firm we say the cell is tagged so that is a uh, tagged now and uh, and this also this explains why a plant cell does not burst when put in a hypotonic solution. So a plant cell does not burst because it contains the cell wall. The cell wall uh, helps to pull to push the pressure back. So that is uh, that is called uh, turgidity. So this is turgidity. The cell is said to be turgid. So that is it for plant cell. In uh, in hypotonic, let us look look at the reverse. A plant cell in hypotonic solution. That was plant cell in hypotonic solution. 
uh, now let's look at a plant cell in a hypertonic solution. So the opposite happens. Uh, it will lose water by osmosis. The plant cell loses water by osmosis. When it loses water by osmosis, it, it shrinks. Now, when it shrinks, we said it and becomes shrinks and becomes flaccid. Flaccid. We say it is a flaccid uh, cell. Now, a flaccid cell is that cell which has lost turgidity. Okay? It has lost turgidity. Now, imagine it here. If this is a plant cell put in a hypertonic solution, it will lose water. Water will get out. When water gets out, it will come back to itself. Uh, the same case to a balloon or a tire. Uh, the tire that we talked about. When you release the pressure, it shrinks. When it shrinks, you can pull it together. So that is that is uh, what happens. So it shrinks and becomes flaccid. Now, uh, when it becomes flaccid, this process is called hemolysis. So the process. Not hemolysis, but plasmolysis. The process by which a plant cell loses water, shrinks, and becomes flaccid. When put in a hypertonic solution is called plasmolysis. Plasmolysis or plasmolysis. That is the process by which a plant cell loses water, shrinks and becomes flaccid. That's when it is put in a hypertonic solution. So that one is referred to as plasmolysis. And we say the cell is plasmolyzed. The cell is plasmolyzed. Now, uh, what happens when you take this, this cell and put it back to hypertonic solution? Maybe we can add a sentence there that when a plasmolyzed cell so when it is put in hypotonic solution it will now again take in water, swell and become turgid. So when a plasmolyzed cell is put in a hypotonic solution, it regains regains its turgidity. So this is called deplasmolysis. Deplasmolysis or deplasmolysis. Uh, deplasmolysis, the, the, the process of restoring turgidity of a plasmolyzed cell is called deplasmolysis. So that is a plant cell in hypotonic solution and a plant cell in hypertonic uh, solution. So I hope that is clear. Uh, it's called uh, 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 okay, water relations in animal and uh, plant cell. So factors affecting osmosis.
factors affecting osmosis. One is surface area. Two, volume ratio. Surface area to volume ratio. Now, surface area to volume ratio represents uh, uh, represents the size. It 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 talks about the size of a uh, substance, the size of um, of a membrane. Uh, so, the higher the surface area to volume ratio, the higher the rate of osmosis, and vice versa. The smaller the surface area to volume ratio, the higher the, the, the slower the rate of osmosis just as, as it is number two is temperature again as we said in our previous lesson temperature increases the vibration of particles so when there is a high temperature the vibration of particles is increased and therefore there is increased osmosis uh, three we have a thickness of membrane we can say semi-permeability semi-permeability of the membrane you remember we said a cell membrane is semi-permeable now anything that affects the semi-permeability of membrane affects the rate of osmosis so that if the, 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 the temperatures are too high okay, if the temperatures are too high the enzymes will be denatured and uh, when enzymes are denatured the semi permeability of the membrane is interfered with and therefore it lowers the rate of osmosis we also have thickness of membrane uh, and others so those are the some of the factors that affect the rate of osmosis uh, role of osmosis I can mention a few and then you check on the others. Role of osmosis. Role of osmosis in plants and animal cells. Number one is responsible for turgidity. Okay, turgidity in plants enables, let's say, turgidity. When plants become turgid, they stand firm. They are erect and therefore it enables for them to trap enough light for photosynthesis to take place. Two, we are feeding in insectivorous plants. Feeding in insectivorous plants. Now, um, insectivorous plants, when, when, if this is let me take for example this one is a leaf if this is a leaf of an insectivorous plant when an insect comes here when an insect uh, strikes it or comes maybe because the flower is nice because there is good scent if it comes here the flower loses turgidity okay when it loses turgidity the, the this one will droop it will fold and when it falls, it closes the insect inside. And the, the, the plant contains uh, insect digestive enzymes. So this digestive enzyme will digest the, the insect that is put in. And then after the insect is digested, of course, the osmotic pressure is released. And it comes back to its farm state and until another insect come in, comes in. So that is in, in plant cells. Three... In animal cell, it is important in reabsorption, reabsorption of water in the kidney. Reabsorption of water in the kidney. When we look at the kidney, we talk about the loop of Henle, where we have reabsorption of water. So. Uh, osmosis helps in reabsorption of water at the kidney. It also helps, number four, in osmoregulation. Osmo regulation. It regulates the osmotic pressure of the cells. You remember we said an animal cell will burst. But now, 
this osmoregulation ensures that the plant, the animal cell, does not burst when it takes in water. So that is, uh, those are roles of osmosis. Let me define other two terms related to osmosis. Osmotic pressure. Just define osmotic pressure and osmotic uh, potential. Now, osmotic pressure is, is the pressure developed by a hypertonic solution. as it takes in water from the hypertonic from the hypo so when we have two solutions hypertonic solution and hypotonic solution separated by a semipermeable membrane it will take in water that force in which it takes in water is referred to as osmotic uh, pressure, osmotic potential. Osmotic potential is the ability of a Take in water from a hypotonic solution when separated by a semi permeable by a semi-permeable membrane. So it is the ability, it has the potential of taking in water. That one is referred to as osmotic uh, potential. So that is osmotic pressure and osmotic potential. So I hope that one is uh, clear for us uh, relating to osmosis. Um, you can find out other details that we have not uh, mentioned here. But I think we have seen the major uh, and the most important things that we are supposed to look at. You can still look at the roles of osmosis. There are very many roles of osmosis in plants and animal cells. You can uh, find that out uh, from whatever reading materials that you have. So that is it. Lastly, we talk about active transport. Active transport. Okay. Active transport. Here we have two terms. We have active. Now, active means energy. Okay. Anything active means there is some use of energy. So, this is use of energy in transport. So therefore, we define uh, uh, active transport as movement of substances against the concentration gradient by use of energy. Movement of substances against the concentration gradient by use of energy is referred to as active transport. Now, there are two things here that are, uh, that are very important we need to note. Against concentration gradient and by use of energy. Let me just briefly explain 
the Guinness concentration gradient. Now, a Guinness concentration gradient. Now we we have a Guinness and we have a log. If you consider diffusion, diffusion and osmosis. Diffusion we said is the movement of subs of molecules from a region of. So diffusion is a region of high concentration to a region of low concentration. Now, osmosis is the movement of water molecules from their region, their region of high to their region of low. You remember, when you say hypotonic to hypertonic to hyper hypotonic to hypertonic hypotonic is where we said we have high water okay high water or high solvent to low solvent so you see in any case it is from where it is high to low high to low high to low so high to low this one now we say this is along the concentration gradient along the concentration gradient but when you say against it means now it is moving from low to high it is like you are running against the wind when you run against the wind there is a lot of pressure that is pushing you to go the other direction but you are forcing it so you are using a lot of energy uh, to overcome that uh, strength uh, of the wing of the wind so therefore active transport is the movement of substances against the concentration gradient uh, by use of energy against the concentration gradient that means from where whether they are high or low it must move uh, uh, like that for example and a, a very good example of this is absorption eg absorption of so absorption of uh, mineral salts from the soil by root air cell now if this is a root air cell Assume this a root air cell. Now a root air cell takes water, takes mineral salts from the soil by the process of active transport. That means inside the root air cell, we can be having either high or low concentration of mineral salts inside here. But they will always come from the soil to the root air cell. If you consider diffusion, then you will say movement from high to low. That means you will say movement because it is high in the root air and low in the soil. You will say move from the root air to the soil. That is wrong. It is movement by active transport because whether it is high here or low here, it will always move from the soil to the root air cell. That means there is a lot uh, of energy that is required for that process to take place. So uh, when you go uh, further with this, you will learn about carrier proteins. We have carrier proteins. Carrier proteins is what now uh, makes it, uh, what, what causes the, 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 this active transport to take place. Uh, energy. So that is a uh, active transport. Factors that affect active transport are the same factors that affect production of energy. For example, glucose concentration. When glucose concentration is high, there is more energy produced and therefore more active transport. Oxygen concentration. Oxygen, oxygen concentration. Oxygen is required in the manufact in the making of energy. The process called respiration. So for that fact, when the concentration of oxygen is high, the higher the active transport. Uh, we have temperature. Temperature affects the functioning of enzymes. And because this is the use of energy, proteins are required. So when the temperatures are too high, the enzymes are denatured 
and active transport reduces and uh, vice versa so the uh, roles of active transport one of the role is this we also have uh, mineral salts that are taken in the body absorption of uh, digested food substances in the body uh, you can look at the others so those are the three physiological processes that we have intended to look at uh, we have diffusion osmosis and uh, and active transport uh, the others you can learn them at a later stage when you go to when you go to colleges and uh, at the university so uh, this is what we have been able to look at so that brings us to the end of that particular uh, topic or that particular discussion so since last week we have done this uh, this discussion and I hope it has been of great help to you for those who have seen it for those who have viewed uh, the, the, the YouTube one and the one on Facebook uh, I think you you have been changed I mean it has at least impacted some uh, importance to you as far as this topic is concerned so folks that brings us to the end of today's uh, lesson I want to thank you for tuning in. Uh, thank you for those who went to work and they will come and sit down later on and revisit the lesson. Uh, maybe you did not, you were not able to look at it for several reasons. But I know later on you will tune in. Also visit my YouTube channel, uh, Teacher Kirwa, and then you can uh, view it there uh, later on. So it will be edited and then available on YouTube. Otherwise, I want to say thank you. May God bless you. Thank you so much for tuning in. Keep watching. Keep here. Let's meet next time. Right here. This time. God bless you. Bye.